In this video, I'm going to be talking about modular arithmetic. Um, this is a way of introducing a new type of number system. And by number system, I mean some kind of set which has an operation of addition and multiplication on it. And I'll be more specific about that later. But what we're going to do is we're going to introduce this number system which can replace your rational numbers, your real numbers, and your complex numbers in all your computations in linear algebra, should you need to have some kind of finite number system to work with. Um, modular arithmetic is also really useful for crypto cryptography and also for coding theory. And it's going to be a, a segue into the group theory that we're going to talk about later. So th the particular number system that I want to talk about is congruence classes modulo n. And we're going to put an additive and multiplicative structure on those congruence classes. So I'm going to just recall the definition uh, of congruence that we've already talked about in class. So I want you to... Um, take some n not equal to zero, an integer, we see that two integers a and b are congruent modulo n if um, n divides a minus b. So if n divides the difference, that is, if a differs from b by a multiple of n. We write a is congruent to b mod n for, for this relationship. Now something we've already proven in class a long time ago when we talked about equivalence relations is that congruence is an equivalence relation. And we use Z sub n to denote the set of all congruence classes. And so by congruence class, I mean the equivalence class uh, for equivalence classes modulo n. So if we take An arbitrary equivalence class, an arbitrary congruence class in Zn, then we can write that as the set of all things, well, clearly, it's the set of all things that are equivalent to A or congruent to A mod n. And we can also write that as the set of A plus Qn for some integer Q. What is this? You're starting off with your representative, and you're walking to all of the other integers which are n away from a. So you're adding multiples of n to a. And you're going to get other integers that are congruent to a mod n. And this is the whole set of, of the congruence class of a. So the next thing that I want to do with this, well, so, so let me first write out an example of this. The integers minus three, one, five, and nine all differ by multiples of four. So they're congruent. They're congruent to each other mod 4. So we can write, so if they're congruent to 
each other mod 4. For example, minus 3 is congruent to 1 mod 4, minus 3 is congruent to 5 mod 4, and you can take any pair you like. And they're related to each other by congruence. If we take the equivalence class of one of these elements, let's just take the equivalence class of 1. Certainly that contains all these things that are related to it, including itself, and others that you can obtain by just adding or subtracting multiples of 4. And everything in here is also written as 1 plus 4 times q, where q is an integer. You'll see that all of these take that form for different values of q, and you can use that to move yourself off the list to other things that are equivalent to 1 and these. So something I've talked about in passing is how to find representatives for each of our equivalence classes. You know, equivalence classes like the equivalence class of 1, the congruence class of 1, go by many names. It's also the congruence class of minus 3 and of 5. But there's a nice unique label that we can give to the congruence classes modulo n. Um, and our next theorem is going to tell us how to do that. Okay, so for every congruence class, I'm going to use x to denote that set for our congruence class. It's going to be in Zn. There exists a unique value. So r is an integer with 0 less than or equal to r less than n, and which represents this equivalence class. The equivalence class of r is the equivalence class of x. So perhaps from the, the form that I've written this, it's suggestive of what technique we should use, right? Our r is going to be some value between 0 and n, but not equal to n. So let's see what tool we have to use to prove this. First off, if x is an equivalence class, mod, mod n, then x has to be the equivalence class of something. So it's the equivalence class of m for some integer m. Now what I want to do to produce a value r which is in the proper range, so m might not be within the, the range desired. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the division algorithm. So apply the division algorithm to m and n to produce Integers Q and R. And the relationship between M and N and Q and R is that M can be written as Q times N plus some remainder. And this is for a remainder within the exact right range. Greater than or equal to 0, strictly less than n. If I shuffle this equation, and I move the r to the left-hand side, I get m minus r is equal to q times n. What that's saying is that m minus r is a multiple of n. That is, m and r differ by 
multiple of n. So I, I could say n divides m minus r first, but where I'm going is that m and r are congruent modulo n. Thus the equivalence class x, which we knew was the equivalence class of m, is also the equivalence class of r because these two guys are related. So now I've shown that some r exists out there. What you do is you take your equivalence class, you pick any number you like in there, you go long division by n, and it produces your r, which is your nice low representative in between uh, greater than or equal to zero and strictly less than n. Why do we know that it's unique? Let's show that it's unique. So to show that it's unique, I'm going to take some other representative which has the exact same property. For uniqueness, take r, r prime, that is, an integer with 0 less than or equal to r prime less than n. And I want to know that this equivalence class of x is also this equivalence class x is also the equivalence class of r prime. So I know that the equivalence class of r is equal to x, which is the equivalence class of r prime. So r is congruent to r prime mod n. They're in the same equivalence same equivalence class, the same congruence class. Thus r and r prime differ by a multiple of n. So I'm going to assume now Without loss of generality, that r is greater than or equal to r prime. So why can I do this? Well, I know that r is greater than or equal to r prime, or r prime is greater than or equal to r. And so I'm going to assume one of those and do an argument. If it was the other case, you do the exact same argument with both of these values flipped. And so I'm reducing some symmetry here. Okay, so r is bigger than r prime. So if these are actually distinct values, if r is actually different from r prime, then since they differ by a multiple of n, I know that the bigger one minus the smaller one is bigger than or equal to n, because they differ by a multiple of n, and they're not the same. However, I also know, well, 0 is less than r prime minus r because I chose r to be bigger than r prime. This is less than r because, well, less than or equal to r, because I know that r prime is bigger than or equal to 0. Right? I know r prime is bigger than or equal to 0. So that's less than or equal to r, and this is strictly less than n. You'll notice the contradiction. r minus r prime should be greater than or equal to n. r minus r prime is strictly less than n. This is a contradiction. What was our unfounded assumption which it contradicts? We assumed that r and r prime were different. That was an unfounded assumption and it led to a contradiction. So it's a contradiction to r not equal to r prime. So r has to be equal to r prime. That is saying that there's a unique representative. Okay. And so the moral of the story is, if you want to get down to a nice representative for your, your congruence class, 
just apply long division, um, long division by whatever you're, you're going modulo, so in this case n, and you're going to get down to a remainder which is congruent to the original, and that remainder is your nice representative inside the range 0 inclusive to n exclusive. In the next video, I'm going to take our congruence classes and put uh, additive and multiplicative structure on top of those. So we'll start doing arithmetic with the congruence classes.